Good evening. We would like to invite your attention to a story. A story of catastrophe, a road to recovery, and a story of success. Her name is Rita Thorne, a victim of domestic violence. While retrieving her child in an unsafe environment, where she was shot in the neck and hand. And she survived with the help of her sister, a vascular surgeon, who resuscitated her in the emergency room and in the operating room performed a vein graft of the subclavian artery. However, she suffered a devastating brachial plexus injury, which paralyzed her hand and caused her pain. Her traumatic lower brachial plexus injury affected her medial cord, which reduced her hand function to zero. Three months after the injury, surgery was performed, and the reconstructive surgery involved transferring nerves from one to another. While the injury occurred proximally in the neck, a distal nerve transfer was performed in the arm, specifically the brachialis nerve to anterior interosseous nerve. A couple of years following surgery, her hand function returned. Yeah, yeah that's a good one. Better. Yeah. Straighten out. Okay. Pinch in again. Great. Thanks so much, Kathy. Okay. Now stay there and be strong. I can't even budge her. She had an ECRB to pronator as well. Because she had no pronation. I remember that. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, how again? Now. Over here. Yeah, I can do this again. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Extend your fingers. Bend it again. Extend it. Bend it again. Keep it bent. Resist me. She's very strong. Okay. Bend your fingers. Here. Extend. Okay, bend it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this one, bend it. Okay. This is her story. Good evening. My name is Rita Thorne. It is my honor tonight to play a part in recognizing someone very special, Dr. Susan McKinnon. I would like to share my story of a personal tragedy to show how Dr. McKinnon has made a tremendous impact on the quality of my life. On a summer evening four years ago, while living in Centralia, Illinois, I was a victim of domestic violence. I was shot several times and nearly died. If not for the quick thinking of some courageous individuals, I wouldn't have made it to the local hospital in Centralia where my sister, Dr. Annette Shores, performed the emergency surgery that saved my life. When I was stabilized, I was flown to St. Louis University Hospital, where a trauma team was waiting. I was in surgery here for several more hours. One of the bullets I was struck with entered the back of my left shoulder, severing a major artery to my arm. It also damaged the area where a bundle of nerves are located that control the function of the arm. I had what was called a brachial plexus injury. Due to that trauma, I lost most of the sensation in my lower arm, and I wasn't able to move it. I was fitted with a splint from my elbow to my fingertips. The only thing I was able to do with my left arm was lift it away from my body, but my hand hung lifeless and useless. I tried to learn how to do everything one-handed, but the thumb on my right hand had also been hit by a bullet, and I actually only had four working fingers. What I once thought were simple activities of daily life, such as showering, washing and drying my hair, putting contacts in, applying makeup, and getting dressed, all became very difficult, if not impossible for me to do without help. Cooking, eating, cleaning, driving, and working, all became major undertakings. There were many things that I couldn't do by myself anymore, things that I had taken for granted for so many years. 
my sister Annette contacted a friend in Memphis whose colleague had some uh, experience in dealing with brachial plexus injuries. So Annette and I took off for Memphis. But the meeting with that doctor was very discouraging. After examining my injury, he told me that the chances of my regaining function in that left hand were abysmal. He also said that he wasn't quite sure why we had driven all the way down there when one of the top surgeons in the country specializing in the treatment of this type of injury was located in St. Louis. I heard about Dr. McKinnon a second time a few days later at a follow-up visit to the surgeon who had reattached my right thumb. He said that Dr. McKinnon was the best in the field of peripheral nerve injuries. So I called for an appointment, sent my records to her office, and was asked to come in right away. My sister Annette came with me since I still couldn't drive and I really needed her moral support. I was scared and didn't want to get my hopes up. I was remembering that word abysmal. But Dr. McKinnon quickly began giving me hope. She brought several colleagues into the exam room and began bouncing around ideas. It was, we could do this and we could try that. After a while, the conversation got a little technical for me when she began discussing which nerve she was thinking of transferring to where. I didn't even know at that time that nerve transfers could be done. It involves transferring or rerouting a working nerve to the area where a nerve is damaged so that this working nerve can take over the function of the injured nerve. I still remember what Annette said to me when we left the office that day. She's brilliant. And I'm here tonight to tell you that she is indeed that and more. In late October 2007, Dr. McKinnon performed a three nerve transfer surgery on my left arm. One of those three transfers was the first of its kind to be done in the United States. Since progress with nerves is slow, I was told to be patient. It could take months or even years to see the full effects of the surgery. At my follow-up visits, Dr. McKinnon was very pleased with my progress. After several months, I could turn my hand over and I could wiggle my fingers. Not something we normally even think about, but to me it was miraculous. I went through months of physical therapy, had several special braces made for my arm and hand, and had more follow-up visits with Dr. McKinnon. And she had still more ideas. Her excitement and enthusiasm was contagious. She wanted to give me even more function in that hand. In April 2009, she performed some additional surgeries that included some tendon transfers this time, a nerve decompression, and a sensory nerve transfer. I gained thumb opposition ability with one of the tendon transfers and was eventually able to pick up and grip things with my left hand. It felt pretty amazing to be able to do that. Prior to the surgery, cooking was a disaster. I kept burning the outside of my left pinky since I had no sensation there. I couldn't tell when it was touching a hot surface. But with the sensory nerve transfer done in this second surgery, I now feel a sensation below my thumb when things start to heat up on that pinky. Kind of a weird feeling, but very effective in wanting me to move that hand. <clears throat> Over the years, I have gained a tremendous amount of function in my arm and hand due to the surgeries Dr. McKinnon has performed. I no longer have to rely on someone else to open a package of sweetener for my essential morning coffee. The daily routines of life and caring for my family that were such a struggle before Dr. McKinnon worked her magic are now mine to enjoy again. I especially enjoy the simple things, such as holding hands with my loving husband. There are so many things I can do now, things that may not have been possible if this wonderfully talented physician had not had the funding to continue her invaluable research. That research and Dr. McKinnon changed my life. But the story does not end there. It led to other things. His name is Thomas Wachtel. On his way to work as a trauma surgeon responding to a case, he was in a motor vehicle accident.
and suffered a spinal cord injury to his neck. Thorne surgery pioneered spinal cord injury recovery. Her great outcome led to the possibility of returning hand function to a spinal cord injury patient. That very same procedure was performed except in a spinal cord injury, the first of its kind. A couple of years following surgery, his hand function began to return. with a huge improvement in quality of life. But he does a pretty good job of using his hands. Not quite ready for the NFL right now, but close. <laughs> I mean, he can literally throw that ball. This is Thomas Wachtel. Congratulations, Dr. McKenna on your selection for the Jacobson Award. As a surgeon, I can tell you that I've always admired the people that have been recipients of that award. And I admire their visionary uh, capacity to see a problem and to find a solution. And I think you're in that category along with all the other people. So congratulations.